great weather to come out tonight, and I know some of you have, have business here and you want to speak to us, so we'll go ahead and get started. Your electronic devices, please silence those things if you would. Other than that, I'd like for you to rise and we'll have our invitation. Please bow with me. Father, we just come before you tonight thanking you for in this special time of the season, Lord. We're just so glad that even Meriwether County has been able to kick off the Christmas season in, in a new spirit this time, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we just ask you as we go about doing the business here in the county, go about doing your business also, Lord, that you would be in the midst. Give us the guidance, the direction that's needed, Lord, as we try to conduct the business here. And Lord, we just ask you as always just to forgive us where we fail you. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge, I I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Commissioners, we have the agenda here before us. I have heard no changes whatsoever. Do I hear a motion we adopt this agenda? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor. So adopted. The minutes, we have the minutes here from the November the 14th, our regular session there at 9 a.m. You've had a chance to look at those, I trust, and I'd like to hear a motion to accept those. So Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor of the minutes? So passes. As we look here for municipal comments, uh, I don't know if that's uh, Mayor Glover or not. She's almost incognito back there. Mayor Glover. I have nothing. I want to commend the commission to break another job because you really did well this past half. And I told her that, but I want to hear about it. It was a good job. We think she did too. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have another municipality out there, so that's it. Let's move on here. I had a constitutional officer, but the sheriff left, right? I didn't. Uh, he was here early. But. Yeah, so we don't have that. We'll start with our department head, Skipper. Nothing this time, Sheriff. Oh, okay, Mr. Alphonse. Uh, yes, very briefly, just want to announce sure, that come on. Uh, we've actually made a few more hires. Good. Uh, so I think I announced at a previous meeting we were, uh, I think, had hired two. Yes, sir. Of the first one, we've hired about eight now. Right. right. Uh, I think most all these are local. The first two we hired was Scott Oglesby and Adam Lover. We have hired Austin Bell, who will be starting on December 11th. John Altman, uh, the 12th. Lee Watson on the 11th, and uh, Matt Burnett, and we are courting, I guess you could say, three others that are very, we're hoping they said they want to come in, and we are extending an offer, and so we can finalize the paper, we'll have those done. So we're probably about halfway through with, uh, all told, when you count some of the others we have, uh, filling these, these 23 positions. So, uh, very exciting move forward, and I think we're going to be able to start taking the shape uh, very soon in Starting in December, the classes, we're going to probably start January 2nd with a, a class to educate certify everybody that needs that. So uh, we're going to be busy, but uh, what's going to be really exciting is the, the work that's going to be done and sort of things. And, and uh, one thing, let me add also, most of these people, the, the reason they were some of the first hires, they're all certified. Austin Bell, John Altman, Lee Watson, uh, those guys, uh, two of them are certified, one of them is waiting on pink print results to come back for their state certification. So, it's just easy for us. We can put a trick to work uh, that they are there experienced. They're currently in our volunteer fire fighter ranks. Uh, yeah, Lee Watson was previously and is returning to us. Okay. Uh, John Altman is one of the most dedicated guys we have. He's got a lot of heart. I'm really excited about having him as a full time employee. <clears throat> and uh, Austin Bell, I think, currently is uh, part time employed and volunteers with Manchester, so he's, he's kind of a local guy. So he's a full timer, I think, from Tom's to the so I'm not sure. I think Tom's did, but so <coughs> he, he's kind of local too. So, so how many of the eight are local? Well, right now, of those six, or this 
Mr. Scott of Fleet, Scott of lives in the county, Adam lives in the county. Austin Bell does not, John Alton does, Lee Watson uh, does not, Matt does not. So uh, yeah. the thing that really gave these guys uh, an advantage was their the history and experience and certification. We did extend an offer to a young lady that lives in the county, but she actually took a job in Manchester for one of the positions that we stole from them. Uh, so it really worked out, and I think, and, and her reason for back to the county was she really wanted the county, but we're going to be running single person vehicles and posts, and Manchester is not, so being relatively new in the field, she wanted to be with a partner, and that was her reason for that. So there was no, you know, she, she didn't choose anybody over, she's very dedicated, she's awesome. We look to steal her back in the future. Uh, she's, you know, going through an EMT program, and once she does that, you know, Give it back, so uh, a little friendly competition, I guess. <laughs> but then, uh, as far as safer goes, two other names, uh, which are dual purpose, the Rick Miller and Leslie Webb, will be firefighter medics. Are part of it. <coughs> the total so far of actually uh, offered and accepted employees, we want to see that's eight, with three that were reporting that's 11, so we're not quite halfway there. So, we're really going to start taking shape. I, I do have one question. That's good news to know because in our work session that was part of the conversation was that we would meet our requirements for the SAFER grant by February. So based on what you just shared, we should be on track. And have we hired our, um, your, have you hired your administrative yet? Uh, I apologize for that, but we've been lagging on that and we have uh, sifted through most of them and we're about to, to finalize the, the the serious applicants that look really good. And what I want to do now is try to, uh, with that, I was thinking about trying to uh, actually farm that out, if I could, uh, to maybe a committee uh, to do the hiring process on that. I may be a part of it, but I was looking for some help to make us. Are you still accepting applications on that? I just had a phone call like over the weekend asking, was it still open? How many people did apply for that position? 41. We had, yeah, many. 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 I mean, I know this board really, you know, you know, talked it up, and we're encouraging people to come. <laughs> there, there were a lot. I probably let me apologize to the board uh, that it has taken as long as it has. And the only thing that I fear is that the applicants that came in early on in this process, you know, if they found a point somewhere else, we may have lost. And, and I, in other words, I, I wish we could. I could have been a little bit more experienced with that. But that'll be the only drawback. So uh, I think that period was open for a couple of months. And, you know, for people that's looking for a job right for the holidays, that's tough on some people. So. But we're going to finalize that real soon and hope to have something completed probably the next week or two. Did you get my other grant? I'm sorry? The other grant that I sent you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I did. Good. And we're looking into it. In fact, the Forestry 50 50 grant is open back up. We'll be applying for that. There's a few small like that we're going to have. We'll be pursuing those aggressively. Open forestry, they will also, um, uh, if you have a place to store it inside, mm -hmm. if they have equipment uh, that they're going to get rid of, they can, they will allow the county to have, have it, it yeah. but you got to have a place to store it. So with our new station, we can take advantage of some of that too. That will open, open up a lot of doors as far as our ability to take care of. There's certain requirements that we can get. I think on that particular program, you know, everything costs $100. It doesn't matter if it's a $50,000 vehicle or, yeah. or it's a flat, flat fix. Good program. But, you know, I think if it's like military camouflage, you have to paint it. I think you have to certain requirements, but it's the best deal available right now. So. I just have a thought. Since Georgia Pacific is not there, not totally gone. But, you know, they had that bucket. Great. Do we, so we're not going to be able to apply for that anymore? You know, I'm not sure because although that they're shutting down this plant, they'll still have presence here. And I think they'll still have employees here. I don't know if they'll consider that our proximity to that, or I guess their proximity to us being eligible. It's like the Talladega plant that are opening. I told them we were doing a, we went out there and did a standby for them Monday morning for some maintenance issues. And they were telling me a little bit about that. Talladega had two people that were full-time employees there just to basically watch the place, keep the grass cut, things like that. So I, it depends on the status of that plant after this happens. I'm not sure what that status is. That's what I think. I think if I'm not mistaken, we have to be within 30 miles, I believe, of that facility. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Keith, anything, sir? Okay. Uh, Ron, I know you're going to hold for public. Okay. Let me go ahead and pick up Miss Jane there in the back. Okay. Thank you. You know, there's not a lot of talk about George Pacific. Um, I mentioned that the Georgia Department of Labor had been notified and they, they're working on what to do with the employees. Uh, that's everybody's main concern, that people that are losing their jobs on December the 15th, what happens. So uh, that is in the works. I've also notified the Georgia Department of Economic Development. We have, I just want to tell you all, because you don't hear a lot about what we do unless you come to our meeting. We've got more prospects right now for Meriwether County than we've had in quite a while. Now, I can't well, guarantee you that any of them are coming, but we're on the short list for two of them right now. And as of yesterday, they haven't made a decision. So hopefully, both of the projects that I'm working on, I'm actually working on four, but two of the four are much bigger than what Georgia Pacific is now. So, just pray, say your prayers, uh, one of them come uh, to make up for that loss, um, but we are working very hard. Uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Economic Development and I had a conversation yesterday, and, and I mentioned in the work session that George Pacific is building a new plan in Albany, was honored for the great job they're doing there, but he understands our, what's happening here, and uh, they have a Deputy Commissioner of Rural Initiatives, Amy Carter, she was representative Amy Carter, has taken over the job of Rural Initiatives. And she wants to come to Meriwether County and sit down and talk with all of us and, and see how she can help us with her Rural Initiative. We certainly fit in that category. So I just wanted to assure you that I'm doing what I can. Is that and Jamie's daughter? No, actually it's not. <laughs> yeah, everybody to that. Me, huh? But uh, no, it, it's uh, another Amy Carter. But she's very nice. <laughs> so, I hope you she get to meet her because we are going to schedule something for her to come. And then to change subjects this morning, I keep Meriwether the Beautiful. I had a dedication of the first adopter road sign. I mean road. A uh, very cold dedication. <laughs> yes, you had, we actually did it. McCoy came, but he had to leave before we ever got going on it, and it was a very quick ceremony, but we dedicated the road. Uh, they will be taking care of that road, and at that meeting, I was told that two other veterans organizations are adopting roads. So, the three roads that we have uh, are all adopted by veterans. That's the Larry Dunaway and some other folks, but uh, that is catching on. And I think the momentum will grow as we get others adopting roads. So that's a good problem to have too. Those are roads we don't have to worry about because they have to clean them four times a year anyway. So thank you. Ms. Jane, I do have a question. I want to elaborate more on the reinforced company mm -hmm. because I had someone ask me about their hiring process. Uh, uh, did they advertise in the newspaper, the unemployment office? Or oh, it's just word of mouth? It's just word of mouth, mostly. I and think. so you just go up and apply? Mm -hmm. You can just go to the plan. Do you have a list in other job openings that they have open? I don't, but I can get that for you. Okay, thank you. But mm -hmm. well, that's going to continue to grow as oh. they yeah, like build up there. Their potential growth will be about 50. Thank you, Miss Jane. Miss Carolyn, you're up. Uh, I just have a few things I want to mention to you all. One is, this is a very belated but very sincere thank you to the county for their support during Meriwether Menu. All the work that went on beforehand and afterwards. Um, we really, we simply could not do that project without you all. So thank you very much to Baron and Commissioner McCoy, to Tyrell, Alphonse, Keith, uh, Sheriff's Office. Everybody worked so cooperatively in supporting that effort. and. You know, it's, it's not just that you did the work, but you did the work with such a great spirit of cooperation and collaboration, and that's just very, very rewarding to be a part of that work, so thank you. Um, and I do apologize for not having officially thanked y'all before now. Um, we also, uh, also I want to put in a plug for Warm Springs. They're working, as you all know, Warm Springs has um, changed their candlelight weekend 
program, which used to be just one weekend now, to candlelight weekends. And so those weekend activities will uh, continue throughout, uh, the, to, throughout the calendar year. Um, and so they have had lots of musical performances, lots of bands, lots of, um, you know, cookies with Santa. We're having a breakfast with Santa this Saturday. Uh, this Thursday in particular, I want to invite you to come out for the sip and shop, community sip and shop. Um, other communities do that, so it's where the markets stay open late and they offer door prizes and refreshments. So it'll just be a great time to um, support our shop locally uh, campaign. The more we shop locally, obviously, the better we all are. So I would encourage y'all to come out and take advantage of that. Um, I also wanted to um, let you know that very recently, within the last few weeks, we have um, completed an application for and have been awarded a grant from the Georgia Council for the Arts. Um, and this is their vibrant communities grant. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's a very significant program that we're going to do. In case you're wondering, this is what it's all about. Um, we are gonna, we're using the grant funds to bring a production of, of uh, Peter Pan from Ceremony Playhouse to Corpus Farms. Now most of y'all know we've done a few of these um, collaborations with Ceremony Playhouse before, but they're always done on Saturdays and many times our families are not, for whatever reason, don't bring their kids out in the numbers that we would like to have. Um, because they don't, maybe they don't understand why arts are important, maybe they don't have transportation, maybe they can't afford the tickets, we don't know. But at any rate, we're continuing to work on that. But this program is, will fund Serenity Playhouse to come down on a weekday. Um, so we'll be doing this on Thursday, December the 20th, and it will be for all second graders in the county. So the, the bus, the schools are going to transport all the second graders up to Corpus. They'll have a, uh, a sack lunch and uh, they'll be able to enjoy Peter Pan without having to worry about transportation or ticket prices. Uh, in addition to that, um, you know, we've been working very closely with the LaGrange Art Museum um, to look at avenues for us to make more uh, arts a more integral part of our school system, and that's something Dr. Griffin is very interested in. And so this grant will include several pieces. One is we're going to have about six volunteers that will be going into the uh, second grade classrooms to read this book to the kids uh, prior to them seeing the show. And then they are going to be allowed to and encouraged to take this book home with them. Each, there's enough books for every child to take one home. And hopefully they will discuss it with their parents and at least have some conversation over the dinner table uh, about this book and why, why the people are coming in and reading and where they're going on the bus trip and so forth. Um, the, the goal when we go in and read is not just to read in a passive way, but to also engage them in facilitating conversations. Why do you think this happened with the book? What makes you say that? What if they had done it this way? So they can, um, the goal is to increase their uh, critical thinking skills and their language acquisition skills and just probe a little more deeply at not just a superficial, you know, story time, but also a much more in-depth uh, awareness of, of the arts as a learning tool and we're hoping that the teachers and, and other school personnel will continue recognizing that as well. If we can get arts integrated in the elementary schools then we start to raise a generation of children who have an appreciation for the arts and a school system that recognizes its value as a tool for learning. So we go in and read, read the book, then they go to the show, and then after they see the show, we're going to sit down and engage again with them um, and discuss, again, looking at helping to encourage their criticality of their thinking, saying, well, you saw, the, you, read, you heard the book, you saw the show, what were the things that you saw that were different, why do you think they did this in the show and it wasn't in the book, and so forth. So I think that will, um, again, help to solidify the the content of the story, but also to help them really think more critically about why things are done the way they are in the arts community. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Um, and I have extra copies of Peter Pan, if anyone would like to have their own personal copy. And if you want to volunteer to read, we're taking volunteers. Um, then the last thing I want to mention is um, we just completed the uh, report again to the Board of Council for the uh, uh, Sculpture. Uh, project, so I have enough copies for you all. There are five butterfly sculptures now that have been placed in each of the five butterfly gardens. We have a couple of communities that don't have gardens in their 
area, but most of them do, and a couple of them not. So I'll let you have that. Okay. Um, but anyway, we have five sculptures um, in Manchester, Lumnoak, Luthersville, Woodbury, and Warm Springs. And each of them has been done in a, in a different way. Uh, the artist looks at the garden and then decides that this is the the artistic elements he wants to bring into the to the sculpture. And I'm really curious about the Manchester one because it's probably the most unique. And um, I talked talk to Mike Brennan today about what kind of reaction he was getting. He said, well, people are certainly noticing it. So that's, a, that's the first step in arts appreciation is to notice it. So anyway, thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Miss Carolyn. And thank you for that new word, criticality. I did not recognize that. That's okay. Because love was synchronicity. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's go ahead and looks like that's everybody as far as comments are concerned. And let's go ahead and bring Ron up because I've got a question before we go into public here. And I don't think there's going to be a need for case number 13. I don't think there's anybody here to represent that, right? Okay. Come on up, Ron. We'll get this thing moving. So, tell us a little bit about case number 13. What do we need to do here? Well, that's Miss Hightower. If you remember, yes. she, she first came before the county commission for a rezoning change in, I think, October 8th. This has been carried over from her. Has she come to you and asked for this to be removed? No, I talked to her, and uh, she, she lives in Atlanta, so she was not going to be here tonight because okay. you know, her age lived in Atlanta. Uh, I told her that, you know, she needs to be here, but of course she's not going to be here tonight. She is going to be here on December 12th. Uh, what she's told me is that uh, she's going to hand me a written withdrawal okay. of her application. Uh, she's going to be here on the December 12th to ask permission for refund for re the rezone application. And she's going to bring me a written letter too at the same time. Well, that won't be a public hearing. No. All right, Ron, appreciate that. What about case, I guess we've everybody here in place for case number 13? Yep. Commissioner? Yeah. Case number 17, I'm sorry. Chair, we need to go in the That's what I was about to do. <laughs> I was just trying to get my ducks in the row here, folks. Did I hear a motion we go in the public hearing? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? We're in public hearing. Mr. Chairman, on that case number 13, uh, the board probably needs to either uh, continue that to the 12th or you need to probably, uh, since we're going here, vote it down. No, she, he said she wants to withdraw it. Why should we continue the case? For that? She had to you two don't have that in yet. I don't have a written withdrawal yet. Yeah. Okay, folks out here, well, we'll have to just wait and we'll come out of public hearing then. Right. Uh, uh, my, my recommendation would just be to continue to the 12th, and then if uh, there, there's not a response for that point, I would suggest that you just Okay. Vote, vote well, I just put the board in public hearing for case number 17. There. That's what we went into public hearing for. So I'll come back and pick that up soon as we get through here. Good. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, case number 17, this uh, Sheila Stewart requests a rezone approval. Uh, for a 6.39 acres from LDR, which is requires five acres minimum to RD, which requires two acres minimum. Property located on Mount Carmel Road, and there's a little private drive that runs down the crop line called Shaw Road, Shaw Drive. Uh, subdivision of the property will give her a 3.05 acre tract and a 3.34 acre tract. Family home place will be on the 3.05 acre track, and Mrs. Stewart will build a single family residence on the 3.34 acre track for her personal use. Uh, there will be a required a 30 foot wide access even across the front property for the track. And uh, this land subdivision and rezone request complies with the company's plan. Got a, 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 got a,
reference to Dollar Harris? No, well, this was uh, Dollar Harris is on Southern Mill Road. Oh, Southern Mill Road. Oh, this it's is Mount Palmer Road. Mount Palmer, that's right. Uh, the Wolf Private Drive goes down to that Shaw Road. Yeah, okay. You should have a copy of her flat in your package. It's just it's just rotated it a little around. different. Yeah. It's kind of oriented like this. It should have a line. Yeah, just a rectangle track. Yeah. You can see the yeah, which manufactured home. Yeah. And it looks like the line should run right along the edge of that and then turn to the north. And uh, that would be the one track, and then the track extends across the lake uh, as the uh, mm -hmm. second the rear corner. Coming off of Mount uh, uh, Palmer Road. Mm -hmm. right we'll go straight. Yeah, it, she had a rectangle lot. She had right on the plate. I can see that. Off the side of the lake. Oh, that blue delineated line is not her. She has a rectangle lot right here. And she proposes to uh, split this lot pretty much deep. And she will have an access easement that will run down this property line to give access across this lot to the lot that she's going to be living where her house is going to be built. Where's the house currently? There's a trailer. There's a home, home right there. there. Front, be over front acreage, and uh, that's where the family home is. She wants to preserve that, and uh, she wants to move down from uh, College Park to where you live now. College Park where you live. Yes, ma'am. She wants to move out of College Park down to this property. So that's her request: is to sink five or six point three nine acres track into two, three acre track. Sure, but I, I did have one question, Ron. Uh, yeah, sure, Ron. Uh, looking at, at the way the, the line is split, Ron, uh, you're going to end up with a, about a three-acre track at the front and a three-acre track at the back. That's right. But that back is going to encompass a portion of the lot on the other side of the lake plus the middle section of the lake. So I just, just wanted to be sure there was going to be enough uh, property remaining there to do a, a septic system and separation from her from a well and that she wouldn't create a you know, an issue where she couldn't build in that little that little track. I think she will have clean room. I think I yeah I think I yeah I just didn't want you to get it and say well I need yeah. I need to build on Does it. does it make a difference how far back the house is? If the house is too far back would it make or it won't have a bearing on I don't think okay. so. I, my only issue would be is there enough room between the property line and the lake and the to be lake. able to do a, a, a septic, well and septic well, system because okay. you got the lake compass, you know, compass about half of that next track and then you've got a corner track across the lake which is, you know, so my only issue was the small area here. Yeah. Is that going to give her enough to build up? Yeah, that'll give her enough. It'd be about an acre. It should be. Because I'm not going to build the well on the Normally, Mr. Gator, the well is on one side and the septic is on the other side. You have to have a separation. Plus, you also got to have a separation from the edge of the lake with the septic system as well. Okay. So, yeah. But, uh, that was my only concern. I think she would be all right with that. Commissioners, any other questions? Do I hear a motion when you're out of public hearing? Let's call and see if there's anyone else. Oh, well, to speak. is there anyone else might want to speak on this issue? Four. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Do I hear a motion to go out of public hearing? Yes, sir. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor. We're out of public hearing. Okay. I guess we're going to do these each individually. Y'all have heard the request here on case number 17. Ms. Shirley, I think that would fall squarely in your district. Yes, it does. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the rezoning 
of 6.39 acres to the two uh, acre lots uh, for the on the recommendation okay. of the planning and zoning board. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? So passes. Since I did not pick up the public hearing for case number one, let's, do I hear a motion we go, I mean case number 13, do I hear a motion we go into public hearing for case number 13? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Do I hear a motion we continue in case number 13 until next meeting? So moved. There's a second. Second. Wait a minute. That is correct. That, that's correct. That's what we need to do. Okay. All in favor. Didn't we just come out of public hearing at the time? Hear a motion. So moved. Yes, sir. Second. All in favor. All right. Before us now, we've got case number 18. Uh, case number 18 is the result. Let, let me go into public hearing. Okay. Do I hear a motion? We go into public hearing. Second. There's a second. Second. All in favor. We're now in public hearing. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Ron. All right. Uh, case number 18 comes as a request to uh, rezone. It comes from JB Communities. This is a company that, that builds houses. In fact, they built several houses in the county already. Most of them are uh, on West Parkway, off of Luther Road. We've got several uh -huh. houses out there. Oh, yeah. How many of y'all built out there? Fourteen or fifteen. Okay. And so now they they look for more land, and they have found the seven acre tract at the intersection of Sawmill Road and Dolly Harris Road. Uh, the company requested approval to subdivide and rezone the seven point six six acre tract into three two point five acre tracts for the purpose of constructing three single family houses. Each lot will have more than the minimal amount of road frontage required for this zoning district. Uh, this land subdivision rezone request complies with the company's plan. I recommend it to be approved, and the uh, planning commission also recommended it for approval. And you see the track that it is now. Mm -hmm. It's got road frontage on uh, two public roads. I think y'all all have. We do. We have it in our paperwork here. One quick question, Mr. Ron, down there where Miss Beatrice McGruder on said, how much space is there there? I don't see an acreage on that. It's about three quarters of an acre. Yeah, I don't think it was much. I think about an acre. Yeah, there's not much there. And that was just a pre existing lot? That's right. So okay, it doesn't enter into this at all? No. That's okay. Not, uh, this seven acre track is what they bought. It's okay. what JB Community bought and then they were subdivided. And each lot will have more than the minimum required road. Is it right? like in lot three? Uh, yes, it will have a driveway coming out. Well, this yeah. is a road. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So what you've got is two roads right there. Okay. Okay. I guess I need some help on it. Is it is it is it off of Dolly Hatch or it's off of uh, Sullivan Mill? Well, it's off of, well, it meets both of them. I mean, it meets on the corner. Yeah. Yes, so I have you know, this is my addition. I'm very familiar with it, but so there's when you split it, is there one entry off of Sullivan Mill? We well, yeah, are going to have one off the dirt road, which is Sullivan so, Mill, and two off. Uh, no, no, Dolly Harris is the Dolly Harris is the is the dirt road. Dirt. So yeah. one entry will be off. Two of off. Yeah. Say that again now. Yeah, yeah. two off Sullivan Mill, which is paved, and then one off Dolly Harris, which is dirt. We'll have, well, can I show you first? Yeah. Yeah. Lot three. So we'll we'll see. Uh, we're going to draw a line, like right here. And then this will be a lot here, and then there'll be two driveways here. Okay. And then the lots, they'll split it down the middle like that. And then, okay. One's going this way, rectangle, yeah, and then the other two, two are going. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the, the drawing line. doesn't look that way. I think what throws you a little curve. Oh, yeah, I don't, I have it. Well, you see, like he's got right one. Yeah. yeah. There's a different one? Yeah, there's a different one. We had it surveyed out. Yeah, that's the clear to right here. Okay, yeah. That first one, it's on the back side. 
Oh, I got good. it. Oh, I'll look good. at the one on the front side. Right. Yeah. I, was gonna say, right. this, this is not I think what throws us the curve, if you look there, you're bringing the driveway out where there's 167 feet, and you look at your road frontage is actually back on Dolly Nixon, which is 328 feet. Right, yeah, because I think one lot yeah. wraps around. I that think that, that's what's now. hard to see there. Yeah. Right. Well, there's a house right there on the corner. Right, that's well, true. that lot's going to go around it, and then there'll be another lot beside it. Okay. And you had an option. You could have gone either way with that right. color lot. You could have come out on Dolly Nixon there if you wanted to. Right. Or, excuse me, Dolly right. Harris. Right. Dolly Harris. Dolly Nixon's up the road. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions, Commissioner? Anybody else want to speak on this particular issue? I hear a motion we go out of public hearing. So moved. Is second? Second. Discussion? All in favor. We're out. The uh, cards fall to you again, Commissioner Hines. Yeah, very, 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 2.5 acre lots for single resident houses. I'll second that. Have a motion, we have a second. Any discussion? Okay, I'll call for a vote. All in favor. So passes, Mr. Garrett. I have one question. Are you the same gentleman that came and spoke about the houses on Farge Road? Nope. Okay. Y'all look similar. Oh, yeah. well, I, I, I don't know. We've been looking for a lot of <laughs> I believe that moves us out of public hearing and there's no unfinished business, so we're all the way up to new business. And I think this first one's going to be kind of a slam dunk. I'll just cover it, Mr. Yes, sir. Thank we're going to need a motion to cancel a December 25th board meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We don't want to discuss this. <laughs> no, 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 Sure, you want to go ahead and uh, discuss that one? I think y'all have looked into that pretty deeply. Absolutely. And Beverly could, could give you a lot more. Beverly. But uh, it's one of those things where, as we mentioned earlier, this will be a system where we'll have a backup on the, the minutes. And also it is a, a subject retrieval uh, program as well, right, Beverly? So that's going to be very important to number one, protection of the minutes, and number two, uh, it's going to be very important with uh, retrieval of information when they're searching because right now it's pretty much a manual search. This was a budgeted item in our current budget. And uh, Beverly, you, you've been working on this and have a lot of detail on it. Anything that you want to Perhaps something on this also includes some training where they'll come here and train. Sure. They'll take the notebooks down to Tallahassee. That's where they're located. And they'll go ahead and process all this. If there's anything we need from the minute books during that time, we can call them. They'll send it to us. I think it's an excellent thing. I think it's something we did a long time ago. If there were a disaster right now, we'd lose all the history of the county. We have no backup right. on any of that. So. State the cost. Just saw. 8647. 8647. Okay. So everything that they take, are they going to sign for? Yes, sir. They certainly will. I've even offered to escort them down there. I think she did. We were hoping they could come here, but the cost was... Yeah. Uh, well, this is one of the things that JCCG had recommended. Isn't it, it wasn't mandatory, but this is one of the things that was highly recommended to do. Absolutely. The one thing I do want to know is this amount is the training and everything. So is there a monthly a service? Is there a monthly fee or a quarterly fee or is this it? Uh, annual, 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 annual after fee. this, and okay. what this will do, it'll go on cloud. So it will be saved here, it'll be saved on cloud. It'll be in several areas. So if there was a disaster
disaster in one spot, somebody else is going to happen. So we're not going to use that. And we'll, we'll have, uh, there'll be two stations that can go in and search and do this at each time. I think that one's about uh, uh, 795 a person. We did have three, we didn't really need three, so we put it down to two. So we can share our stations if we need on that. But I'm very excited to get this done. It's something that's been on my radar for a very long time. Been very concerned about our minutes for all these years. It's because you hear about the disasters happening. So, uh, and also to the search and retrieval of different things. Uh, we've had different ones of you that's asked about roads. You know, and unless you can give me a time frame, the only way we can find out is go pull a book and start reading. Sure. There's nothing else that can help us get to that spot. So now we should be able to put, plug in that name, and anything that comes up with that name on it will have page after page, and then we can search for it. I can honestly see how this will be helpful for open Absolutely. market requests. Yes, I mean, the bigger, you, the more your county grows, the more challenge you have, the more open record requests. So this will eliminate open record requests as far as manpower goes. So it's definitely something that's needed. What was the additional cost on them coming here? Well, that was going to be another six or seven thousand dollars, I think. You had to, had to pay for them calls. to be here to do all that. Mm -hmm. you know. And um, I had hoped to go that route to start with and not let the books leave here, but the additional calls for the training and all that, I got nervous about that, so we just decided to let them take it down there. And I've, I've asked them over and over again, are you <laughs> sure? Are you, are you in a van? Are you in a car? Who's driving? You know, I'm almost, <laughs> not, I'm almost not sure that it yeah. would be worth the difference. Yeah, I've been really nervous about that. But they do this. They said, you're not the only one out there that we do this for. We do it for a lot of other, other governments. And uh, they said, you know, we've never had any problems, which I'm praying there won't be one now. But uh, that's, that's what I was saying. So, so do they take all the, the things at one time? Yes, ma'am. They would take everything at one The only thing that would not be on there that we could search would be the handwritten minutes. That's from the somewhere in the 1800s, the first few books. What's the timeline? Um, it's going to take, I think, several months to do this. It's not something that's, it, it's, that's as quick a turnaround as we can get. I think I'd rather pay the additional money to have them do it here. Well, I don't. Well, I don't really agree. What if, the van, what if the van blows up all the way down? Well, well, if it blows up today, it could happen here or it could happen there. It's a chance. But I mean, once again, I applaud you all for doing this initiative because it has been, um, in several of the ACC classes and trainings, they have constantly talked the importance of this. So. It is important. So, and the thank retrieval, you. I mean, you know, the bigger we grow, the more that you know uh, things that come up the more you're going to need that search engine and, uh, and mcci is a sister company with me and okay. so that's really good too that we've got both of them here and, and they'll be able to on future meetings they'll be able to incorporate those in actually we will at that we'll, point. Be we'll pick that up we'll pick that up and do that once yeah. everything is scanned in we'll okay. pick it up we'll start putting them in ourselves okay. i will allow one question comment from the audience go ahead is this something the water and sewer authority should be doing also uh, my recommendation would be that, that we need all of our authorities, uh, since they're subsets of the county, to be able to... That's probably a good, good suggestion. Which so one? The water and sewer or the Air Force? Yep. Should we all be part of putting their, their stuff on this? Well, well by law, you have to keep the minutes, right? Right. Well, yeah, we keep them. We have to put them on the so. Like I say, if the book burns up, then we're out of time. That's right. Yeah. I would think that IDA... Everything that's a, Do we need to reset now? One at a time. Go back to your your setup here. What does the money that you've got right there now? What does that cover? That's going to cover most of the minutes I have right now. Now, since we have started talking about this, there have been several other meetings. So there might be some additional pages. Okay, and I don't know how we pay for this. If we did incorporate all of the minutes from all the authorities, what would that cost? I'd have to find out how many books they have, how many pages they have, and I could get that. You know. Yeah, they could, they they could do that. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need each authority should do their own? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Give you contacts, yeah. contacts for the people. And I'll, That's I'll, right. I'll get I'm worried about that, that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe it could be negotiated since it's so many different authorities that yeah. maybe we could get a better price since you got so many different ones. I mean, and then if that was here with the county, yeah, and if that's the case, then that may be advantageous to have them here because no, we don't need them for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
So why don't we go ahead and approve what we've got in front of us and go ahead and ask that make, make the next step to see what we need to do with the authorities. If they need to pay for it, we need to incorporate it, we need to bring them here. As Brian says, bring them out here and let them work. But before you sign that contract, wouldn't it be possible for you uh, to contact them to see if the price could be paid? Could you not have a contract with an addendum? Yeah, what would you do? Could you, you go back any time and change that, Miss Lucy? Well, if you want to do, uh, maybe approve uh, something based on another conversation with them, um, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow to see what the You can amend the contract. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the start date? As soon as it gets started, signed, signed, I guess they'll be picking, up, picking them up pretty soon and taking them down there. Or that's what we're going to talk about in March. Well, I'd like to make a motion to allow Buster to go ahead and sign it, but I would also like it contingent upon the fact that we contact them in reference to the individual authorities Good. to see if we can have a uh, cheaper rate um, by combining multiple areas to that. And that way it doesn't, has, doesn't stop us from doing it. That's sounds I'll good. We have a motion to do a second. I second that. All right. Any further discussion? I never knew buying real estate in a nebulous area was so costly. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Do I hear a quit? Thank you, Mr. Bill. He picked that one. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? All passes. Okay. Location, location. Location, location. Uh, all right. <laughs> We're up to grand jury presentations for November. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, it's kind of forever. Uh, but we do have the grand jury uh, presentments for the uh, for November 18th term. I'll just, uh, you know, we present this to you guys for just ending the record. I'll present the, uh, you know, mention the things that they, uh, uh, you know, kind of pointed out. Uh, they, they did support... Uh, Do I have a copy of that? Yes, it should be at the very end of your, your document there. They did support uh, and agree with the county commissioners on your resolution about the uh, uh, support of the split in the Calhoun Judicial Circuit. The grand jury did support that. Uh, and they uh, you know, wanted also to commend you guys and thank you all for passing the resolution as well as Sheriff uh, Chuck Smith. Representative Bob Trammell, Representative uh, District Attorney Kirk Cranford. Uh, they commended, uh, you know, Judge Rasnick with the DA's office, uh, uh, with, the, you know, with the DA and the assistant DA, law enforcement personnel, the county, uh, Kai for what she does, and Baptist Court. And then they also recommended uh, that the uh, grand jury, jury fee remain the same as uh, well as the bailiffs, that's forty dollars a day, seventy dollars for the uh, bailiffs, and they made some appointments for the tax uh, order, the tax equalization. And we present these to you guys just for entering into your records. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. So there's nothing in any of their recommendations that gives you heartburn at all. No. Sir. Need a motion to enter it into the record, right? Right, just acceptable. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept this and enter it into the record? So moved. Or second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? So, okay, we're up to the update of the fire station projects. And I know you just got through doing that, so you want to do a real skinny? I'll do a real skinny on it. Uh, Lone Oak, mid December. Uh, yeah, we should be ready to go. Uh, Luther's will probably be two or three weeks after that. Duran, we're working on the uh, sewer options there. Uh, I mentioned to you guys about holding on the paving. We want to do the concrete pads at each of the bays. That will uh, you know, give us some long-term uh, you know, better product because we can pave up next to the uh, concrete pads a lot better than we can up to the building. Uh, we'll also put the bollards and we'll, we'll put those into the concrete pads. Uh, that will allow us to be able to wait to better weather and uh, further review of our budget before we do the uh, actual paving. And we'll start on uh, working on the balance of the stations and locations uh, during the month of December. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions y'all might have for Mr. Gay on that topic? 
And as soon as we have a firm date, we'll, we'll do a little ribbon cutting on our first station. Okay, here are no questions. Let's go on to our report from our finance director. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you've got to back and forth. She was just as laid back 
staying calm and collected. I probably would have been a nervous wreck trying to make sure everything was done. But uh, I guess the right person was in the right place at the right time. So thank you very much for putting all that together because you, re you really did an excellent job. And I do thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Um, also, Carolyn mentioned the sip and shop in Warm Spring, but Commissioner Hadley cannot be here tonight. So she asked me to uh, say a little bit about it too. And also on this uh, sip and shop part, it has to wear an ugly sweater. There's an ugly sweater contest, um, evidently. So if you show up for that on Thursday, it's from 4 to 8 on the 29th this week. Um, wear your ugly sweater for competition. And she said it's an effort to get the locals to support local small businesses. There will be sales, prizes, hot cider, and snacks. Wear the ugly sweater uh, for a little extra fun, and she thanks everybody. And that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Miss Mary uh, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go ahead? Yes, uh, I would like to comment on the uh, Christmas. But first of all, I would like to say uh, everyone congratulated me and gave me all the credit. But first of all, I give all the credit to God because if it hadn't been for Him, I never would have made it. But second of all, I want to comment and thank my committee because they also were a part of this plan. And so I want to give them credit also. Uh, the next thing I do hope that this can be an annual event. So I want to ask the commissioner if they will allow me to start advertising it because I want this to be a tourism project. And in order for it to be a tourism project, then it has to go outside of Mirwell County. So I would like to put it in the Georgia festivals so that it will be recognized as an annual festival that outside people will come. And so I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for that 501C. I want to thank all the commissioners and everyone that took part in this because it took all of us working together. And I want to thank all the cities because if they had not been willing to participate, then it would never have been a success. So I just thank everyone. It wasn't just me, but it was all of us working together that made this program a success. Well, I think it's a great idea to advertise. Yes, it definitely has to be advertised, but the thing is, it has to be, I think they start like the first of the year, they have this Georgia Festival, and different books that you can put it in, and uh, it can be advertised. Well, before we go any further, then, I, since we're still here, I'd like to make a motion to allow that. I second. Did you just make this an annual event? Is that what I just heard? I made a motion for her to be able to uh, advertise it as an annual event, yes. Okay. Any further discussion? I have got a motion and a second. All in favor? So pass. <laughs> Was that off, Commissioner Bush? A uh, couple of things I wanted to mention. The ACCG meeting, uh, I think there was at one point that was very enlightening. Uh, hitherto, communication out there has depended on big, tall towers. And what we're hearing now is you're going to see along the utility lines small antennas is what I assume. So this could help us with a lot of advancement. And so if you've got somebody in your district is wondering why an antenna is not being built or why a tower is not being built like I hear from time to time, I think this is what's happening. They're in a transition from old technology to new technology. So be prepared. And I, I hope that hope helps us in everything in the future. And uh, it certainly will give them an area. And it, it's almost like this thing's going to become sort of a ground loop out there. But they're going to put it every, was it 500 to 500 feet or yards? I don't remember what it was. I think it's yards. They're going to start doing that. And so it will create a loop system rather than just a tower. So I guess everybody's got a line within 500 yards of their house. So maybe that will solve that big problem. The other thing I was going to mention, too, uh, that afternoon, we went down to Warm Springs, and they were having a mock store opening, which was good there at the foundation. And I, I don't know, I always call it the Roosevelt Foundation because it's just ground into me, I suppose. But we, Miss Jane and I, and Dr. Bob Patterson were given a pretty much an exclusive tour. We got to go down and look at some of the equipment that's down there in the bottom of that building, and it is almost unbelievable what they have. 
I had only heard of 3D printers. I got to walk up and put my hands on one. It's just unbelievable what those things will do. And they've got students down there in classes just you know, we talk about simulators for aircraft and that sort of thing. Well, they've got simulators down there for paint boots. They've got a simulator that teaches you to drive heavy equipment. They've got simulators for about anything you want to do, and they're constantly teaching. And we got to go into one class that was being taught, and they were preparing them. Uh, it was a blueprint school, but they were getting them ready to understand CNC operations on lathes, milling machines, this sort of thing. And it's all down there. It's and of course we got to look at some wiring. And I, I don't know if y'all realize this or not, but the future is almost here. You're going to see a lot more low voltage in residential houses than you've ever seen in the past. You're going to have DC circuits that's, that's just over, and they just go to a relay somewhere. So, and that's what they're teaching those kids. And I say all that to say it's amazing. It's, didn't know that was in the county, it's there. And they're wanting us to recognize that fact, I think. And the other thing, there is a print shop down there that they're more than willing, if we've got anything that needs to be printed, please contact them. They're just almost itching to do something of that nature. So I thought that was pretty good. They're about to start a new welding school down there in conjunction with West Georgia Tech over here. But I was a little overwhelmed by seeing all that, so I thought I would mention it. And I did mention the only road uh, situation I had with McLaughlin Road, that right. drop off. It will be, and I got that in my notes. Okay. okay. And I think that's everything that I've got this day, at this time. Commissioner Hines. Thank you. Once again, I do want to give kudos to Commissioner Bray on her country, country Christmas. No, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It was yeah. very successful. Um, I too enjoyed it. Uh, the kids enjoyed it. The parade was just superb. And just a great turnout. So once again, I'm excited that it will become an annual event. And once again, as you know, local people enjoy, we can get other people from outside to come. And so now the county has a peaches and a pines and the beginning of the year, and now we have something for the end of the year. So we've come a long ways in our tourism, and we should be proud of ourselves. There was a winner of that tree, I don't think, anybody. Oh, yes, right. Um, the winner of the tree was the city of Gay. Uh, but I, I, I've been told that we're going we're gonna to have to make sure that once you decorate on one day, you don't come back every other day. <laughs> and keep adding on, you know. But, uh, but I think it was fun, the, the competition. As a matter of fact, it, it helped out uh, Lono because someone put on Facebook, where's Lano? They didn't say Lono. I think they thought it was an A. And so uh, Beth re replied and said, it's in Maywood County off of 54, so if, if people were noticing, you know, so that, that's good. All yeah. the trees were beautiful. All the trees were really beautiful good. and very creative. Especially very, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> Did you put my um, face in put on one spring? Oh, no, they did. They asked me could they have it oh, okay. since I put the box down. Like, so. <laughs> um, I do want to mention a couple of things. I didn't know you put it uh, The Long Oak... Uh, City of Lono, um, they have a community dinner the first Tuesday of every month, and so this year it's normally at the community building, uh, but the mayor and the city council has decided to open up the country store, and so their first uh, dinner for December will be in the actual country store on December the 4th at 7 p.m. Also, one of the things they're going to offer is they're looking for vendors who would like to set up inside the country store. So we're looking for local uh, business, any uh, you know, arts and crafts who would like to set up during that time. So make it very festive. So once again, Lone Oak is getting on the um, I do want to uh, mention, Mr. Gay, thank you so much for letting us know that one of our goals for 2019 is the road maintenance program. I think that's going to be something that's going to be very helpful to the county. You know, this time of year we get so many phone calls about potholes and roads, but unfortunately this time of year because of the weather, uh, you do get more potholes. And so one of the things that I do want us to, to look at is um, being able to uh, address this a little bit more. I think the um, road work I have on the website has been very helpful, so I encourage people to do that. It allows everybody to know what's going on, so I think it's a good tool that we still can promote even more than things we are doing. So thank you for that. Um, uh, I also attended the ACCG uh, 